Google Analytics 4, also known as GA4, is a powerful tool that can help you understand how users interact with your online presence, whether it's a website, a mobile app, on Android, or on Apple iOS, or even both, or all of them. Now, GA4 will allow you to make informed business decisions around your marketing strategies. So in this video, I'm going to explain and show you where you can see your user traffic and where it's coming from so you can gain a better insight on how traffic related data is coming into Google Analytics 4 and also understand and give you the opportunity to see where more conversions are happening for your business. So I am using the GA4 Flooded Demo account for this and we're going to look at acquisition reports in GA4. Okay, so let's get started. So what you need to do is make sure you're logged into a GA4 property. Now, I'm using the GA4 Floodit example because there's quite a lot of data in there. Uh, we'll include the link in the description below. But what you want to do is on the home page, when you get there, you'll see that this toggles and you want to go to reports. And then what we want to be is under acquisition. And this is usually under the life cycle section as well. Just for further note, there's this toggle piece here. We can go left and right, and it's really useful to have that toggle. If we go to life cycle and acquisition, and we'll look at overview first of all. Acquisition overview gives you these product cards. It's information cards. So essentially, we've got users, new users, real-time data with the number of users in the last 30 minutes. And then next to that, we have new users by first user default channel groups. And that just gives you information on how are people finding the sites and new users. And then if we scroll a little bit further down, we've also got sessions. So that's broken it down as an overview of how many sessions are entering the website as well. And then if you're using Google Ads or pay-per-click advertising, we've got sessions by ad group as well. So you can see how well your Google Ads are performing. And there's also a lifetime value on the far right as well. So that's your overview panels for the acquisition section. Let's have a quick look at user acquisition. So essentially, user acquisition is anybody that enters the website for the first time. And we have two graphs. On the left-hand side, we have a line graph that pretty much works on a daily basis. If you hover over this, it gives you plenty of information about the traffic source. So currently, I'm highlighting in blue color and showing the information for direct. And then also, we have a line graph on the right-hand side, and that gives us information about the most popular users in a graph format as well. Further down, we have information about new users and we have the source and medium on the left hand side. We also have engaged sessions. So a definition of an engaged session is somebody that's been on the site longer for 10 seconds or has had a conversion event. So that could be a scroll, click on a particular button or have seen more than two screen or page views. Now, a screen is classed as a mobile screen on an app. So if you've got an Android or an iOS app, a screen is classified as a page view, essentially for a app device. And then a normal page view is what we're used to on pretty much a desktop or mobile site. So those will be the two different definitions of the, the page views and the screen views there. We've also got information about event counts and conversion events and also total revenue. This is very important to make business decisions. So if you've got a marketing campaign, what you want to do is define which is your most profitable source in terms of revenue and that'll give you that information here as well now if we look at traffic acquisition this gives you pretty much the same data at a more granular level so we're also looking at sessions as well so with here we've got more information about sessions so this is pretty much people that have been on the website more than once so everybody enters the, the cycle initially as a user and when they enter as a user there's a first party cookie data that's used to define that's a new user, and then Google Analytics 4 will look into it as sessions moving forwards. Also within the traffic acquisition section, we have session default channel groups. So this is pretty much the different ways you can enter the website as well. Now you may recall in Google Analytics Universal that a lot of traffic was added into the direct source. Main reason is because with Universal Analytics, it wasn't always that clued up on different sources of traffic. So there may be a particular source of traffic that entered the website and people may have gone for a different source. Now with Google Analytics 4, there's a lot more different session groups and source groups. So we've got mobile push notifications, we've got organic video, and we've got unassigned. So Google is trying to be more granular about these different types of 
session data and channel groups. So we'll find that there's a lot more different groups within traffic on the website, and that gives you more opportunity to understand those groups. Rather than in universal analytics, what happened was that if you had lots of traffic to direct sessions, then maybe a different ways entered the website. If it wasn't a feature that Universal had at the time, they would be put into the direct bucket. So there's more granularity within GA4, the session default channel groups. Okay, within Google Analytics 4, we have a number of opportunities to apply filters to give you more granular and concise information. So on this screen, underneath the traffic acquisition session default channel group, there is a box or a button that says add filter. So I click this button. On the right hand side, we can see a section that talks about building a filter. Now there is a vast range of different filters that we can apply, including from dimensions such as custom information, demographics, page screens, platform devices, just to name a few. And within this section, we can add all sorts of different elements to make our data more granular and concise. So in this one, I'm going to look at browser. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select Chrome. And if I click OK and apply, the filter will just display all the traffic sources that have come through Chrome. And you can see the graph has changed. And also with that, we can see direct traffic has had them the vast majority of sessions from Google Chrome. Now, to remove the filter, all I need to do is click the cross on this button here, and it reverts back to the original information there. Also, if you wanted to filter different elements, you could go and also apply a filter for country as well. So let's add country, geography. And then we can see the dimension values. Let's have the United States. And then in summary, it's saying include the country equals the United States. Click apply. And we can see the traffic has been filtered through the United States. We can go even further. And if you wanted to change that from country, you can just click on this section here. And then you could change it to city. Let's say there's a particular city we want to see more traffic. Let's go for New York. Click OK and apply. And we can see the information that's come from the city there as well. So that's an overview on how to set up filters within Google Analytics 4. Okay, so we can see the benefits of using filters within the GA4. Now, as we've got New York City selected, let's say you may have a marketing campaign or a radio campaign that's targeted New York City. By looking at location, this would be a good way filtering out that information and having a more concise overview of the data available. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to close this particular filter and it's reverted back to its original form. Okay, I'm actually going to hide to this menu for the next section because we are going to explore this table in more detail. So it may look somewhat familiar with Universal Analytics where you've got traffic sources and a number of metrics going across so by default in GA4, we have session default channel group. Now you can select the drop down and you can have a number of different elements as well. So you've got session medium. So this is pretty much CPC, organic referral. You do have a number of elements that are set as none. So that most likely would be direct traffic, but not set is pretty much any data that um, Google's unfamiliar with. You've got referral traffic. We've also got here invite a friend campaign. So in this test site, there has been some custom session mediums that have been created. So then we can cycle through and we can look at session source platform. We can see we've got Google Ads and manual as well. So these are all elements that you can look at as well. Uh, if we look at session campaign, you can see these look like ad groups as well. So there are quite a lot of features there. But let's go back to our default channel group. And then we can see we've got these, these main elements here as well. So let's look at these sections first, and then we will go back to adding a secondary dimension as well. So users in the traffic acquisition, everybody that's new to the website will enter as a user. And what will happen is, is once a user has done some activity on the website, they will naturally become a session. And then we've got this feature, it's called engaged sessions. So within GA4, 
the definition of an engaged session is somebody that's been on the website longer than 10 seconds or had a conversion event. So they might have scrolled down a page, clicked a particular action, if you've got custom events on there as well, or viewed two or more screen or page views. So a screen view is on a app, whether it's Android or iOS, and then page view is pretty much a standard page view on a website, whether it's mobile, desktop, responsive, that'll be a page view. We have average engagement time per session. So when a session is converted, we can see that the user engagement time is on there since so pretty much the time on site. And we've got engaged sessions per user. So that's pretty much the number of engaged sessions divided by the number of users that gives you engagements. And then we've got events per session. So that's like the average number of events per session across the board. And we've got engagement rate. So this is a good definition of how well the site is working in terms of percentage of engaged sessions divided by sessions. So we look at the number of sessions in total, and then we have the engaged sessions and divide them by sessions to give you the engagement rate there. Now we've also got some new features here, which is event count. Now everything on GA4 is tracked by events. And we can have further looking at the events as we can see all the events that are currently available for this website. So let's say if we look at click, we can see all the number of clicks that have happened on the website as well. If we have a look at another one, for instance, let's go with session starts because we need sessions to pull through. So we can see the session start is pretty much much less than the sessions overall, but there is a good correlation that that is working. So let's put that back to, to all events. And then we've got conversions. So these will be all the conversions that we have on the website. But the, the following metrics for conversions and total revenue, they need to be populated by conversions that are actually set up on the website. So you need to have e-commerce tracking available if you want to track revenue from there as well. Okay. And then finally, you've got total revenue, which is all the revenue for a particular traffic source, which is really useful as well. Okay, so let's take a look at a session and source medium. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the drop down, go to session source medium. So this is more like the traditional view that you accustomed to seeing in Universal Analytics. And you can see that we've got Google CPC, we've got Google Play Store as well as organic, and we've also got Firebase as well as a referral, and we've got YouTube. So you can see that there's a lot more granularity as well. So what we also we can do, you can see we've got more rows. So what I'm going to do is I'm expand the row set. Let's put 50 just to make sure we've got everything covered. And you can see we've got a lot more granularity of source and medium as well. Let's also have another quick look at session campaigns as well. So you can see which sessions and campaigns that are, are working quite well. So for instance, we've got a number of, it appears to be Google Ads that we've got here as well. And you can double check that by using the secondary dimension, which is pretty much the plus sign. So that's source medium. You can see we've got an additional section there. So you can use secondary sources as similar to Universal Analytics. And then with that, I'll help you to, to navigate further through the information that's available within GA4. Okay, so we've explored the features within the table on the traffic acquisition page. So let's remove some of these filters and let's make the, the table back to its original form. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna explore comparisons. Now, within Google Analytics 4, there are opportunities to compare different metrics. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk you through that and we'll show you the easiest way of doing a comparison. And this will be a good place to start if you want to look at particular data within Google Analytics 4. I appreciate that the free form exploration reports can be somewhat intimidating, but if you wanted to use the comparisons as a starting point for getting particular information, that would be a good place to start. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Add Comparison. So we can add up to five different comparisons, and there are a number of dimensions that we can go for. So what I'm going to do is within this dimensions, I'm going to look at Session Default Channel Group. And essentially what I want to do is compare direct traffic versus paid at the moment, and then we can look at other elements we can add on top of that and build other things as well. Okay, so let's put the Dimensions tab and click OK. So in summary, session default channel group equals direct, click apply, and that'll be one comparison. So by default, GA4 adds all users as a comparison. 
And let's add another comparison as well. And then we can include dimension. And again, let's choose session default channel group. And let's this time look at paid. Click OK, click apply. So we've got three traffic acquisition comparisons at the moment. And then we can see this information as well. So what we see at the moment is direct traffic is doing really well. And we also see that PPC is also another traffic source that's doing relatively well. But overall, most of the, the traffic coming to the website is through direct. So let's remove the all users comparison. And we'll see, yeah, the vast majority is coming through direct. So let's add another source into the mix as well. So let's go back to session default channel group. Let's look at organic and click apply. And again, we can see information here. Organic on this Google flooded test account is the least popular based on, on the, the test data we've got through here. But looking at this, this gives an opportunity. So say if I was looking at it from a data point of view, I could say, okay, so we get most of the traffic through direct search. That might mean there's a really good branding exercise that's taken place or, or well known for branding. So if there are particular keywords that I want to go after organic, there's an opportunity to look at organic traffic and improvements there. So with this report, it gives you an overview of information and you can compare particular traffic sources or even locations or demographics against one another to see how they perform over time. So some of the benefits of using comparisons is pretty much track user sources to see how effective a campaign is on effectiveness and return on investment. And you can also ensure diversity. So if you've got a traffic profile, you can identify areas of low traffic and work at other traffic sources, see how you can improve them as well. And again, that ties in well with identifying weak areas. So based on this information, organic would be a good one to push. And then you can also evaluate targeted campaigns. So if you're doing a comparison, let's say you're doing a radio campaign and you targeted say New York City and Los Angeles in order to see the engagement or traffic based in those areas, you can also do segments or comparisons as areas to target. So you can do quite a lot with having comparisons there if you want to target particular metrics as well. So all in all, that would be a good place to start if you're looking to acquire data from Google Analytics. But to make most of your reporting in Google Analytics 4, there is a lot of opportunity with GA4, and it's important to get your hands underneath the bonnet, so to speak, and look into GA4 and understand how it works, and the experience will definitely develop over time. So make sure to check out any other guides that we have on GA4, and thanks for watching. My name is James King, and I'm the SEO team lead here at Click Intelligence. 